Okay, Paul, Paul CQF HB. I mean Hitachi, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Wrong company. So the <laughs> traditional information management model looks like this. Yeah. So you have a, a, a variety of source databases, relational databases, your customers, your transactions, your mortgages, your whatever, right? You traditionally put this into an enterprise data warehouse. You then create one to many data marts. And a marts is just a perspective on the warehouse, right? It might be geographic, it might be product, but the reality is if this gets to uh, several terabytes, you can't possibly read that, right? So you create marts to support that. And then you have a BI tool that accesses, accesses this information, right? This could be your Cognos, could be your um, business objects, things like that. You then have ETL tools that read from this environment and put it in here. And you have an ETL tool that reads from this environment and puts it in here. What's that ETL tool? An uh, extraction, transformation, and load, yeah. right? Select from, transform, insert to, right? That's your traditional model. And this is all well and good, and you're gonna create a thousand reports, uh, and it's not gonna go wrong, and you've invested millions of dollars, great. The difficulty with this model is um, it's highly batch-oriented, right? So I grab from this, I run a few jobs, I put it into this, run a few jobs, I put it in this, eventually I can access that data four hours later. Uh, very good for batch information, very poor for real-time information. I can make it fast, but I can't make it real-time. Very difficult to handle volume in this world, right? So I can handle gigabytes of information, but yeah. once I get to tens of terabytes of information, I can't even move it, let alone query it, right? Imagine running a query off a petabyte database, almost impossible, right? Uh, but the worst part of this entire environment is it's incredibly brittle. And by brittle, I mean if you require change, if I buy another company or I add a new product or I need a new report that needs a new piece of data, I now have to change this entire model. I now have to change the reports, the marts, the warehouse, the ETLs, and the source information to make that happen. Well, that's six months and and uh, and, and a million dollars. Right. So what do you do in order to positively affect this environment and create a... Um, second environment to allow for those Vs. Well, Hire another one. CIO, CMO? No. Go outsource it to like <laughs> HP or... No, oh, you okay. just you have to think architecturally okay, different, fine. right? Okay. So, so now you have new information. You've got social information, you've got machine information, you have um, unstructured information like documents. You've got new information that you might want to access internally or externally. There's lots of external information that you can grab. You're going to think about what's going to be valuable to you. Instead of ETLing it, you put it into something referred to as a data lake. The biggest difference between a data lake and enterprise data warehouse is the schema. In this world, I've predefined the schema. I know that customer equals this, product equals this, transaction equals this. I've predefined it. In this world, I don't really care what the schema is at all. I'm just going to take everything from my sources and put it into the lake and keep putting it into the lake until I actually need it. It's only when I read from the lake that I actually need to worry about the schema. We use what's referred to as integration tools. So instead of an ETL, it knows how to connect to a thousand different things and pipe all those things into your data lake. In fact, it's going to pipe it in with very, very high throughput. So as fast as this com can come in is as fast as I can put it into the lake. This is, in fact, real time because I can have a thousand nodes making that happen. Okay. Then you create an analytics database. An analytics database you do in fact in real time, where I want to access this lake in order to create a much smaller database I can query on. Um, and, but I'm going to do that in real time. I'm not going to do it when I apply the information. And then my set of tools is a visualization set of tools. Because I want to be able to put things in maps, I want to put things in dashboards, I want to put things in, I want to embed back into the original application. I want to do those kind of things in my visualization tool. I also want to write code, machine la machine learning language, uh, data science language, all within that environment. And I'm using integration support that. Now, both of these things are well and good. In my, my structured information, your unstructured information, I now can handle volume and velocity, but they don't work well separately. They have to work well together. So what you need to do is have a means to connect your data, your data lake with your warehouse. I'll give you an example. Your 
warehouse might be far more beneficial if the if you can combine the client information with uh, your mortgage application information. And the data lake is far more valuable if I can uh, look at my client information and compare it with the Twitter feed that's coming in. BW Lure is not interesting, but knowing that BW Lure equals Paul Lewis is far more interesting. And then finally, how to make this the most valuable is to, in your visualization tool and in real time, blend this entire world together. So imagine a dashboard that in real time can access the lake, access the warehouse, and access the in-stream information. This is called blending. So that in my portal, I can actually see this Twitter feed coming in and how it affects my business. How long does it take me to go from this model to this model? And what's it it's not going to, it's incremental. This will still be true. I still have a thousand reports. I still need to be able to do this because this is where I create my traditional operational value. It's this world that's going to create the new business value for it because it's introducing and combining your operational technology with your information technology.